Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the film Across the Wide Missouri. This is continuing my quest to review as much of William Wellman's filmography as I possibly can. Clark Gable's uh, cunning fur trapper character, Flint Mitchell, who is uh, going across the American Midwest and throughout the West Coast to kind of exploring and fur trapping and trying to make money off fur trapping. There he falls in love with a Blackfoot Indian chief's daughter and marries her and they fall in love. And he's trying to kind of come to terms with the Native Americans in the land while also being with this Native American woman and navigate his way across the American Midwest. This film is another example of uh, MGM kind of screwing over Wellman. As I said before in my review of My Man and I, he had a lot to do with a regime change at MGM because of his film Battleground, which kind of caused it and got Louis B. Mayer out of there and the new regime in because they supported Battleground. And after that, they didn't treat him very well. And this is another example of that. He made Across the Wide Missouri. This is actually reuniting him with Clark Gable. And Clark Gable and him didn't have the greatest relationship after Call of the Wild. They were polite to each other. They'd talk about business and things like that. But that was about it. And it's kind of a shame because I feel like they could have worked on a lot of different pictures together had it worked out, but it didn't. But uh, Clark Gable loved Battleground, actually, and admired it quite a bit. And he actually picked Wellman for this film despite their problems on Call of the Wild. And Wellman actually, when he was was told he got the picture he was like I want you to make sure that Clark Gable knows that I'm the one who is directing this film because I don't want any bad blood like he totally understood they didn't like each other but they were like no Clark Gable picked you and so it worked out Wellman did have a decent time making the film him and his family went out and all went on location this was shot at the Colorado Rockies around that area and where these fur trappers really were he wanted him him his wife and his kids all paid for from the moment they left the house to the moment they got back. And he had a wife and I think it was like five or six kids at this time. So that was uh, pretty expensive to say the least, but um, they said they would do it and they did it. And apparently they had a great time shooting the film, but it wasn't until he got back and NGM didn't really like the film and they didn't like how test audiences felt about it. And it wasn't really an action packed film. It was really Clark Gable's character coming to terms with living in kind of a Native American world. This is actually based on a book that's not like a nonfiction story, it's kind of more of a guidebook telling like historical accounts of kind of what goes on. They basically just took the title of this and made this story and made a completely different film. It's just because like Hollywood does, it was a bestseller and they were like, well, we'll make a movie about it. We'll just have it have absolutely nothing to do with the book and I guess everyone would be cool with that. It's funny actually, because the last Clark Gable Wellman film, Call of the Wild, literally had nothing to do with that book as well so I guess they like had a thing going where they'd take books and make adaptations that had literally nothing to do with them or almost nothing I mean Call of the Wild is a little better than Across the Wide Missouri in terms of adaptation they cut this film down it's about 78 minutes and put narration on it and Wellman hated it so much he disowned the film and says I've never seen it and I never will and knowing that you could say you know maybe I didn't have the most open mind going into it, but I know it was cut down and messed with, I didn't know he hated it so much. Whoever recut and added the narration by uh, Howard Keel to this film to give it some more commercial appeal, I guess, clearly like didn't really understand filmmaking. Howard Kill's narration, and it's supposed to be the narration of Clark Gable's uh, character son, at first is just annoying, and as the film goes on, keeps bothering me. And I felt that this film was probably the most frustrating experience I've had while watching a Wellman film. You can tell there was probably something special in there, but there are times where it literally took over scenes. Especially, there's a major turning point in this film where a major character dies. And instead of letting Clark Gable and the other actors have this moment, the narrator explains what's going on. I mean, they made this film pretty much for idiots. I don't think Wellman films were really made to have narration. I mean, if you look at Buffalo Bill as another glaring example, I think he was never comfortable with narration. And it's interesting that the narration that is in his films are in films he doesn't like. It's hard to get into. I didn't 
really quite like the film. I actually think it's probably one of his worst films. Buffalo Bill was probably a lot worse overall, but this was a lot more frustrating because there'd be some really good scenes that they wouldn't mess with as much, and then there'd be other scenes that it looks like they really cut down. And they really wanted more of an action picture, and Wellman wanted to do what Wellman wanted to do, and this time it really didn't work out. The relationship of MGM and Wellman, I think, is the worst he had with any studio throughout his career. Watching this and why they assigned him like an assignment picture like My Man and I after he did something like Battleground which was very well regarded and got them all the positions they have and then they do this for him. It was a hot property and it had a big star and they did have a big director and it didn't work out and they tried to save face but they did it in the worst way. The narration by Howard Keel just spells out things but not only spells out things, it just ruins moments and it sounds like the film's almost talking down to me. It felt like a studio executive got overzealous in the cutting room and tried to make like this brand new movie that would suddenly make tons and tons of money. This film was successful actually and it's a fucking shame because it's a, just a terrible movie. I r really wish someone would release the original cut because there's some interesting parts to it. I don't think this would be a triumph for Wellman's career or anything. I don't think it would be an amazing film, but I think it would have been a lot better than the cut we currently have, which is not very good. Whoever came up with this idea to do this is just like a terrible human being. They just like really ruin this movie. And it's, it's a shame because you think at this point in his career, he's had a lot of hits. He's a very prestigious director at this time. And you have a big star that you'd let it go, but they didn't. And you get this kind of like very cut up, frustrating movie. It does have a lot of cool actors in it. It has uh, James Whitmore, who was also in Battleground. Of course, that's Clark Gable, who I think looks like he was trying to do a decent performance. And Frankie Darrow is in, you can almost blink or you miss him. This is Timothy Carey's first film. I believe this was like Jack Holt's last film. Then Ricardo Montalban, who I don't like as much as I liked him in previous Wellman uh, films that he was in, but uh, he actually sustained a major injury while working on this film, he was fell off a horse and ran over by a horse, and he had major spinal problems because of it. Then in the 90s, he got a nine and a half hour corrective surgery to fix the problems he had had because of this movie, and that surgery left him uh, basically paralyzed from the waist down. Really, this film didn't work out for very many people, unfortunately. And it's sad that that happened to Ricardo Montalban because he was a really great, I, I love Ricardo Montalban, he's a great actor. Maybe it's because I've seen too many Wellman films and I kind of know I, I feel like I would know how he would, would have reacted to this, and I kind of expect a certain amount of quality and artistry to a Wellman film that just this film certainly doesn't have. I don't want to say it's the worst. It's definitely uh, probably, I would say, on my list of the worst Wellman films to see, and I would only tell someone who's a Wellman fan to see it, but I'm not going to tell them that they're going to have a good time. There was a funny bit where he trades this suit of armor that he had gotten from, uh, I think it was like a, a Scotsman, and he trades it to this Indian chief uh, basically for his daughter, and the Indian chief like walks around with the suit of armor under his clothes like while they're having this huge brawl, and like, like he's just walking around like making these clunky noises, and this film has a little bit of charm, so it's not as bad as Buffalo Bill, but that narration with its grandstanding and the music they added to it, it just feels like Wellman's still trying to be Wellman, but the studio executives are like fighting it and trying to like contain it and push it down as much as they possibly can. This film is maybe the best example of why him and MGM ultimately didn't work out past Battleground because they just like didn't seem to really want Wellman to be Wellman. And I think at that time it was harder to be an auteur. If you're a studio director, they wanted you to be a studio director. And you can tell Wellman was getting sick of doing that particularly after he disowned this movie, and rightfully so. I just don't think this holds up to his style, and I think it's probably good that this film has been slightly forgotten and isn't very readily available, although it is on Amazon Instant Video, or at least it was when I made this uh, review. There are times I honestly wanted to tell the movie to go fuck itself. I could tell there's something there. You know, you can feel like there's something there. Maybe there isn't, maybe the original cut was really bad and the studio cut is way better, but I can't imagine that to be true. Those executives at MGM were just plain idiots to what they did to Wellman, and it's it's really a damn shame. And watching this film makes me sadder than it was to hearing about what had happened to him with My Man and I. So if you have seen Across the Wide Missouri and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe 
if you would like to. My next film in my William Wellman series will be Reaching for the Sun, and I believe that'll be this week, or at least it will be coming up very shortly. And I hope to see you then, and thank you for watching.